This is the Barbados Today Afternoon News for Monday, February 26. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. The Barbados Workers' Union wants government to get salary negotiations underway without any further delay. General Secretary Tony Moore said this morning there has been no further progress since the social partnership met under the chairmanship of Prime Minister Frendel Stewart last October. Barbados Today's Emmanuel Joseph reports. Speaking to Barbados today on the sidelines of day one of the Week of Excellence at the Courtney Blackman Grand Salle of the Central Bank of Barbados, Moore expressed concern that her union had written the Ministry of the Civil Service no fewer than four times over the past month asking for talks to resume. However, she said the union has not even received a reply. She said what was needed now is leadership in getting the social partnership to function so that wages and other grievances can be addressed. Moore said that the option of industrial action should not even have to be contemplated if the social partnership were allowed to function. The BWU leader said it's now almost three quarters since the government had promised to evaluate the performance of the national social responsibility levy at the end of the first quarter to determine whether a salary increase was possible. Morden noted that nothing has been done at this stage. From the Central Bank of Barbados, Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. The Small Business Association is stepping up efforts to revive business in the capital. The SBA hosted its inaugural tour of Bridgetown this morning in connection with the Global Environment Fund and Small Grants Program. Coordinator David Bino hailed it as a success and said there are plans to host tours for at least 500 people. I think the tour, it was really a very interesting and informative tour. Um, it's a tour that not only tourists will enjoy, um, but locals would definitely enjoy as well. And I think they will learn even more about their country than they already know. Um, there are many surprises on the, on the tour that locals will encounter. And I find because it takes you on a historical roller, roller coaster ride and that it's, it's going to be something that would leave a indelible mark in terms of your experience of Barbados. And um, I also found that being a local, a Barbadian, um, it was enjoyable to see my country from that light as well. And particularly from my organization as it relates to the Just Small Grants Program, um, we are impressed that it is done, but it's also done using renewable energy. So you're, you're having a good, enjoyable tour, but at the same time, you're not impacting the environment negatively. So it's a, a double dividend, a win-win situation. Democratic Labour Party candidate for St. Michael East, Nicholas Aline, wants to transform the Mylords Hill area into a 24-hour commercial zone with a number of small businesses attracting tourists. Aline explained his vision over the weekend when he declared open his constituency office in the area. My vision and my goals for this at Michael East constituency. And I would have explained in a brief detail to the Minister of Tourism because I think that especially this area that where we are standing on and it's very fitting that the office is located on this particular area because I see that this area can be transformed into a 24-hour street beginning from the bottom by the Welch's Post Office, right up to the Norman Hills roundabout. This will also provide some economic activity and create other opportunities for small businesses, small and, and medium-sized businesses within this area where persons can have the opportunity to hear dressers and barbers. And I also would want a piece of the action of this community tourism. And that is something that I would be seriously championing for this area because I think that we are right and we are ready and we are fitted, we have the potential to do that. Obviously, we would want to work on our infrastructure and our roads. We would want to see the improvement of our roads, and we, we have already started that program. Opposition leader Mia Motley is describing the opening of the Cane Garden Police Office Complex scheduled for this afternoon as nothing short of political gimmickry. Attorney General Adriel Brathwaite is scheduled to open the facility this afternoon, but addressing a community meeting of the Barbados Labour Party 
At the Leicester Vaughan School last night, Motley charged that the complex is incomplete and has not yet been signed off by the contractor. We understand the political gimmickry, Cynthia, that you will see the Attorney General open a police station tomorrow that is not finished. This is the only government I know that has ground breakings before the ready and opening ceremonies before the finish the work. You heard me talk earlier. You know anything can be made to look pretty, but do you have the certificate of practical completion, Colin? Those are the questions that as a finance officer, you would be asking the company, if you were working for the company, with respect to an institution that is being opened and handed over. Can the contractor now be moved off of site and the police move in tomorrow night? If that cannot happen, why then is the opening ceremony being held tomorrow other than to make a puppy show? There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Thank you for staying with us. We're back with news from the region. Grenada's main opposition, National Democratic Congress, is warning of possible electoral fraud in next month's general election. And the party has renewed calls for a national debate with Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell. NDC leader Nazim Burke told a rally last night he had been reliably informed that individuals were being brought in from the United States to cast ballots in the March 13 poll. The incumbent New National Party won all 15 seats in the last election and both political parties say they are now confident of victory. Burke claimed Grenadians have been saddled with taxes over the past five years and the NDC can place the country back on a course of long-term development. He also renewed calls for Prime Minister Mitchell to join him in a political debate on national issues. There are plans in Trinidad and Tobago to introduce digital currency for trade and investment. Barter Coin Exchange is the company behind the plan and it says it will reduce the cost of doing business. More in this TV6 News report. Barter coin could become the modern adaptation to barter trading. In what Barter Coin Exchange Limited calls a credible, accountable, and stable environment. But the company's CEO, Grant Wyburn, says since the announcement of the event to introduce the public to Barter Coin, the Securities and Exchange Commission, backed by the Ministry of Finance and Central Bank, issued warnings. The warnings, unfortunately, are very, very relevant. There is a heightened potential for fraud when it comes to digital currencies, absolutely, as digital currencies are in general very unre unregulated worldwide. Cross-border distribution risk, another problem highlighted by the SEC, which Weiber notes is also relevant, as there is minimal digital currency in Trinidad and Tobago. In terms of liquidity risks, he says there is a strategy for investors to exit should they need to. We look forward to working with the relevant governments, uh, relevant government departments, I should say, to ensure the financial safety of the people of Trinidad and Tobago and compliance and integrity of barter coin as well, so we can assist in stimulating the economy. Wyburn says the government was engaged in November of 2017 and he plans on continuing the pursuit. The company has sought international legal advice and plans on doing so locally as well. On the international scene, U.S. asset manager Street Corps said it plans to seek details from gun makers on how they will support safe and responsible use of their products. 
This adds pressure on the industry following the February 14 shooting that killed 17 people at a Florida high school. Other firms, including Bank of America Corps, are also reviewing their relations with the weapons industry. And that's news this afternoon. Remember, there's more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marie Claire Williams. Good afternoon.